Hey everybody and welcome back to another exciting and informative episode of 13 Minute AE Tutorials, where you learn tips, tricks, and shortcuts in 13 minutes or less. No BS, just AE. This tutorial is part 3 in our 3 part reactive lower third series. In the previous tutorial, we created our title bar using expressions, text animators, set mat, and shape layers. Before that, we created our name bar. If you haven't checked out those tutorials, I highly recommend you do that before watching this tutorial as we will be building on what we've already learned. In this episode, we'll be using essential graphics to make super quick changes to our lower third and speed up our workflow. We'll also be animating this lower third off as well as retiming our animation to make the entire animation longer or shorter. Check out our new 7-Minute AE Tutorial store by following the link in the description below. Give me some help with that YouTube algorithm by giving this video a like, and share this video and my channel with your fellow motion graphic designers so they can become After Effects rock stars just like us. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to my channel and help us grow so that I can continue creating these tutorials for all of you. Click the bell so you're notified every time I upload a new video, and leave me a message in the comments below. Sign up for my Udemy course, The Power of Shape Layers. It's a comprehensive course that covers literally every aspect of shape layers, and is guaranteed to make you a shape layer wizard. The link to that course, to the project file for this entire three-part series, and the preset we created are all in the description below. I've also included a table of contents, so you can go back and rewatch sections that you found difficult. Okay, there's a lot to get through, so let's dive right in. Okay, so this is the final installment in our lower third tutorial series. So far, we've created our name and title bars, including everything needed to animate this lower third in. We've used an expression, which you can find in the description below. We won't be applying that expression in this tutorial, but make sure you copy it or save it as a preset for future use. I've also included it in a Word doc within the project file for this series, so make sure you check that out. Now we just need to finalize this lower third by animating it off. Before we do that, I'm going to show you how you can use essential graphics within After Effects to speed up your workflow and make super quick changes. So let's get moving on this final installment. Let's go back to our project panel here. So now this is the comp that we're in. So if you right click on this comp and choose open in essential graphics, we get this panel right here. So as you can see, 81 dynamic lower third is this comp here. I'm actually going to change the title of this to lower third. One of the advantages of using essential graphics in your workflow is that you can easily make changes from this one panel instead of going through and opening up all of these layers. Before we jump into that, click layer new null object, and we're going to call this title bar control and hit P on that layer, and we want to position this so it's somewhere like in the middle of our title bar right here. And then just grab layers six and seven here and just parent that to our title bar control. And we want to make that layer also orange. So now we can easily move that around without affecting the other animation. So I'm just going to kind of go through each one of these layers and pull up the properties that are the most important. So for our lower third control, P and S, you can drag up our position and you can rename this to like lower third position. You can also drag up your scale. So we'll say lower third scale. And now see, you can make changes to this and it will affect everything. I did notice that our name layer is not attached to that. So let's go ahead and attach that layer to our lower third control. We also want our title bar to be attached to the lower third control. So see, now this controls everything. You can increase the scale. This has full control over your lower third, which is exactly what we want. Okay, now for our name here, few properties we want to look for. Source text. This is what controls what the text actually says. So if you drag that up, name, you can change it at this level. So see, I'm going to say Sheila McKnight and everything adjusts. But this is a super quick way to make those changes is that if you use essential graphics and you bring those properties up into this panel, it will update automatically. We also want to have control over our text color. Grab this fill color and pull it up here and we'll call this name color. Okay, and then go to a name bar. And we we'll open up box and we have a fill there. So this is going to be our box color and we have our name bar. So this is going to be our bar color. And you can see why it's a good idea to go ahead and change these as soon as you drag them up because they all say the same thing. They all say fill color. So make sure it says name bar color. Okay, and keep moving down. We'll go down to our title. And again, we're going to grab our source text and we're going to call that title. And again, we can test this out. The text automatically updates and everything changes instantaneously. I'll change this back to motion graphic designer. We want to make sure that we grab our text color here. So fill color, and this is going to be our title text color. I should say title color. And then we need to come down to our title bar, bar color, title bar color. 
And then the only other thing we need to grab is our title bar control, PNS. Bring up the position, title position, bring up our scale, call this title scale. So it takes a few minutes to set all that up, but now watch, you can do instantaneous changes. Whatever changes you make at this level is going to update automatically within your comp. These are not great settings, I'm just kind of showing you. And this all happens instantaneously. So we have something that looks kind of like that, which is a little bit better. Uh, I'm going to set my title scale back to 100. Now see, we can move this over. And if we hit quotation marks, it brings up our safe guides. So the reason why I want to add in that lower third position is as you make changes to these settings. So say if we change this like to my wife's name, for example, it's now off centered. But by having this lower third position, you can easily just adjust that over. Now, see, so you also may want your title position to be shifted a bit. These controls just makes life a lot easier and you don't have to go inside of your actual layers and do anything. But using essential graphics in your workflow like this makes life a lot easier. Now, so we want to make sure that we get this animation right. See how this comes in? Take off my motion blur. How this box comes in right here. You want to watch out for things like that. And that's because our title bar is starting to come in a bit early. So let's just move that down. Wait for the animation to complete before it comes in. So now the only thing really left to do is to back out of this animation, meaning we want to animate it in reverse so that way it closes up. So the best way to remember how to do that is it needs to go in the opposite order that we animated it in. So the last thing to animate in were these keyframes. So copy paste those, you know, right click keyframe assistant, time reverse keyframes, and notice how your scale came in last. Well, now your scale needs to come in first. So whenever you reverse these, just make sure you get this order right. Go to about right there, and then we have these keyframes, so copy, paste, right click, time reverse. Okay, so then our next keyframes are gonna be this right here, and that looks like it comes at about as this one is finishing, so right click, time reverse, and then we also have these keyframes here. It's gonna be about right here. Time reverse, and let's kinda see where we're at right now. So it closes up, moves up, and then everything drops down. This is our position of our animation. Let's grab this and we're going to copy paste. We're going to do right click keyframe assistant time reverse. But now remember at the beginning we had this animation where it kind of went over and then it came back. Well, I just wanted to go back to the center. So when I get to this keyframe here, actually I want to make this position zero. We can get rid of those keyframes. So it moves over like that. And now see how we suffer a box there. One of the things I highly recommend you do is trim your layers. Okay, and what I mean by that is, this is where the animation ends for a title bar, end it there. Same thing with your text, go ahead and end it there. So that way you don't get any lingering layers like that. Uh, you also have for your name right here, you want to end that. Leave our name bar up because that's what this box is. And then I just want to do a little cool thing here at the very end. Let's go forward maybe two or three frames from our last keyframe and put a position in rotation keyframe. Shift page down to go for 10 frames and let's change our rotation now to negative 90. And we want to move our position up a bit. Shift page down 20 frames. Let's move our position all the way off screen and let's change our rotation now to negative 270. Now let's grab all these keyframes here. Right click keyframe assistant easy ease. And the ones we're going to affect are in the middle. So grab these middle keyframes, go to our graph editor and we want to pull this apart so that way. It's going to go up quick, kind of hang, and then come down. So now if we watch this whole thing together with motion blur on, we'll see this is what we get. So that's kind of cool, right? I want to kind of just play around with a little bit of this. So I'll put my name back in here. She's not actually a motion graphic designer, but she is a badass. She has much more talent than I do. Go to this last keyframe, right click, trim comp to work area. So that way we close everything off right there. What if you want this to be longer or shorter? The best way to do that is if you command or control A to select all the layers, go up to layer, pre-compose, and I'm gonna call this lower third pre-comp. So now we have everything inside this pre-comp and command K and because we're set at like nine seconds, let's make this, we'll say 16 seconds. Okay, so now what if we want this to be longer than what we have right here? Like what it needs to stay on the screen for longer? Well, instead of going into here and hit you and readjusting all these keyframes, just pre-compose it, go to where your animation out about where it starts. So which is about right somewhere in here or right there. Now let's split the layer. 
And then we want to move it down to about how long you want it to be. For this first layer, right click, time, freeze on last frame. So that way it's going to hold until we get to this layer right here. And again, you want to split the layer so that way they don't overlap. And so now it stays up for a little bit longer and you can extend this as far as you want. So say like if you really want it up for a very, very long time, just extend this out. If you want it to be shorter, right click, time, take off, enable time remap. Remember again, this is where the animation about ends. So say, what if you want it to be like really quick? So the animation comes in, let's get it to where it, where it just stops and then you can shorten it. So that's a quick way to lengthen or shorten the animation. What I don't recommend doing is I do not recommend you go to time, enable time remap and adjusting those settings or going to time stretch where you can actually change the percentage of your animation simply because that's going to affect your other animation. You don't really want to affect this animation here. You just want to affect the length of the actual lower third animation. So that's the best way to do that. And hopefully this helped you guys out. This is something that you can use over and over again. Something you can easily change the colors of your lower third or the text. And you could actually even export this as a motion graphics template to be used in Premiere. So that's something to keep in mind. If you don't want to stay within After Effects, you can actually use this in Premiere as well. Hope this tutorial helped you out. Please comment, like, share, and subscribe. And click the bell so that way you're notified every time I upload a new video. Share this video and my channel with your fellow motion graphic designers so they can become After Effects rock stars just like us. And please leave me a message in the comments below and let me know what you thought about this episode. Hopefully you learned something new and useful. And don't forget, check out our new 7-Minute AE Tutorials store. Sign up for my Udemy course, The Power of Shape Layers. It's a comprehensive course that covers literally every aspect of shape layers and is guaranteed to make you a shape layer wizard. The link to that course, to the project file for this three-part series, and the preset we created are all in the description below. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.